My name is Anderson, Hans Christian Anderson, or H. C. Anderson. I have this thing about fairy tales. In a village, there once lived two men who had the same name. They were both called Claus. One of them had four horses, but the other had only one. Near the road stood a large farmhouse. I might get permission to stay here for the night, thought Little Claus. So he went up to the door and knocked. And inside, the dog was really hideous. His eyes were truly as big as towers, and they turned round and round in his head like wheels. But after looking at him more closely, he thought he had been civil enough. So he placed him on the floor and opened the chest. Goodness gracious! What a quantity of gold there was! He was really rich now. So he replaced the dog on the chest, closed the door, and called up through the tree. Now pull me out, you old witch! What are you going to do with the tinderbox? Asked the soldier. That's nothing to you, replied the witch. You have the money. Now give me the tinderbox. I tell you what," said the soldier. "If you don't tell me what you're going to do with it, I'll draw my sword and cut off your head." "No," said the witch. The soldier immediately cut off her head. Alas! There lay the old Chinaman on the floor. "I wish grandfather was riveted," said the shepherdess. "Will it cost much? I wonder." Well, now that's a story. Which I heard when I was a child, and now you've heard it too, and know that what the old man does is always right. Go and ask him how much the instrument is, and one of the ladies had to go and ask. A hundred kisses from the princess, said the swineherd, or everybody keeps his own. And the ladies were so busily engaged in counting the kisses that all should be fair that they did not notice the emperor. He raised himself on tiptoe. What does this mean? He said when he saw that his daughter was kissing the swineherd, and then hit their heads with his shoe just as the swineherd received the sixty-eighth kiss. Get out of my sight! Said the emperor, for he was very angry. The poor duckling was driven about by everyone. Even his brothers and sisters were unkind to him and would say, "Ah, you ugly creature! I wish a cat would get you." The ducks pecked him. The chickens beat him. So at last, he ran away. It was terribly cold and nearly dark, and the snow was falling fast. In the cold and the darkness, a poor little girl with bare head and naked feet roamed through the streets. Lights were shining from every window, and there was a savory smell of roast goose. For it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she remembered that. She drew one out. Scratch! How it sputtered as it burnt! It gave a warm, bright light, like a little candle. As she held her hand over it, it was really a wonderful light. It seemed to the little girl that she was sitting by a large iron stove with polished brass feet and a brass ornament. How the fire burned and seemed so beautifully warm that the child stretched out her feet as if to warm them. When lo, the flame of the match went out. Once upon a time, there was an old poet, one of those right good old poets. One evening, as he was sitting at home, there was a terrible storm going on outside. The rain was pouring down, but the old poet sat comfortably in his chimney corner, where the fire was burning and the apples were roasting. It was wonderful both to hear and to see. The greater part of it was beyond my comprehension, but it led me to think that if we men can acquire so much, we must surely be intended to last longer than the little span which extends only to the time when we are hidden away under the earth. 
Well, that is a famous dish, said the princess. But what shall we do for sauce? Oh, I have that in my pocket, said Jack. I have so much of it that I can afford to throw some of it away. And then he poured some of the clay out of his pocket. The wedding festivities lasted a whole week, and the dogs sat at the table and stared with all their eyes. <laughs>